I frequently ended my videos by stating that current developments in digital audio are rapid. Let me now start with this statement at the beginning of this video. For the subject of this review, the iFi Nano IDSD Black Label does not only have a long name and an attractive price. It is remarkable that portable decks seem to lead the development and that is why I review them. I do not have sufficient expertise on headphone and in-ear listening and thus will not judge the portable use but restrict myself to domestic use. Though I will mention the features that are uniquely for portable and headphone use. The Nano Black, as I will call the Nano IDSD Black label in this review, has the extruded aluminium housing we know from other iFi products. It's very sturdy, this time it's black and the bottom lists all the features. It's designed to be combined with your smartphone using the two firm wide rubber bands that come with the unit. That is why the top is somewhat rounded. It measures 64 by 96 by 25.5 mm and weighs only 139 grams. Ok, time to look a bit more up close. On the front we see a 3.5 mm jack to connect the headphone to. A second jack is optimized for the higher sensitivity of in-ears. iFi uses TRRS jacks which is great if you own balanced headphones. The LED further to the right indicates the power status, battery status, the sample frequency and MQA all through colors. This is really becoming a trend and for someone like me that has a low color sensitivity it's not really convenient. But it's cheap and it takes little space. On the right the volume knob that doubles as a power switch in the counterclockwise position. On the left the fixed level line output. In the middle a switch that offers two filter settings, one minimum phase budget filter that is optimized for listening and a linear phase transient aligned filter for measurements. Apparently there are people that think that less than half a dB roll off at 20 kHz is important or at least more important than a better transient response. Just use the listen position and forget the other one. On the right the most ingenious solution for portable use to date. The OTG A-Type USB input. Normally a Type B input is used on DACs but the solution here solves the problem with iPhones for the Apple Lightning to USB camera adapter can be plugged directly into the Nano Black. Also supplied are a USB 3 cable of around 1 meter length for connecting it to a USB 2 or USB 3 port on the computer or streamer, an adapter plug to USB B and an 18 cm adapter cable to USB B, both to use with standard USB A to B cables. When opened the first you see is the battery that I folded away here. It's attached to the print using a connector and thus can easily be replaced. Then the line output on a 3.5 mm jack and the USB type A input mounted on a semi detached PCB. Here the in ear and headphone jacks. The four contacts for balanced operations are clearly visible. Then the dust proof potentiometer which always makes sense but even more so in portable devices. When we flip over the PCB we see the XMOS USB interface chip, a small STC MUC microprocessor, two clock crystals, one each for 44.1 and 48 kHz based sampling frequencies and the Burr Brown DAC chip. This chip is able to do PCM up to 192 kHz according to Texas Instruments, the current owner of Burr Brown. But the Nano Black does play my PCM 3582.8 and DSD 256 files effortless. Perhaps that these are downsampled in the Nano Black I can't say. Not that it really matters, the amount of music available at those high sampling frequencies is extremely limited. All the tech is nice but how does it sound? Well here's the real surprise. 
for it's different in character than the Project Probox S2 Digital I reviewed a few weeks ago, but not less. The iFi doesn't have the touch of harshness in the highs the project has, but is slightly less open in the mid-range while the lows go impressively deep with excellent tonality for its class. It is, of course, a completely different beast. Where the project is designed for stationary use, can be used as a digital preamp and does full MQA decoding and rendering, the iFi only has one input and no volume control on the line out where it needs a program on the computer or smartphone to do the decoding of MQA. On the other hand, the iFi consumes little power and thus can be fed from an internal battery and works with smartphones while the project depends on a separate power supply. When the Nano Black is compared to, for instance, the Meridian Explorer 2, it wins sound-wise, does a wider range of sampling frequencies including DSD, but only does MQA rendering and not decoding. It does perform great in my setup 3 and in my setup 2, ranking next to the project. I don't think too many people will care for MQA for mobile use. They still argument whether 256 or 320 kilobit per second MP3 is good enough and that all has to do with storage. People rather take 250 than 150 albums with them and find the quality of MP3 fine for mobile use. Otherwise they would have gone to AAC already since that offers more quality than MP3 at the same bitrate. But if you want a DAC that you can use for both portable use and domestic use, it's nice to have MQA rendering. The build quality is very high. The undergo USB A solution is brilliant and will be appreciated by iPhone owners. Battery life allegedly is 10 hours and the battery is user replaceable provided you have a torque screwdriver. At less than 250 quid it really is a steal. I am constantly looking for interesting equipment to review. Doing series of Me Too products is extremely boring. And again I managed to find one in the iFi Nano IDSD black label. If you want more, come back next Friday and subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the comments, just as the links to the description of my three setups. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.